Or have Truman State on the blue side. Yep, Truman State blue side with South Florida being on the red. So I almost wonder how the bands are going to be, if there's going to be a lot of target bands, especially for this team of cup. Gotta imagine that maybe the meta isn't necessarily what you want to look at when trying to hit home towards your opponents. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a scouting matchup. If who does their homework, I feel like. You can really you can really hinder a team if they have someone that could be considered like a one trick if they have something that they're just absurdly strong on but then their champion pool is uh quite weaker after that so we'll see how it goes but we see a vlad and an ergot ergot feels like a, a a targeted ban i feel like in my yeah, own drop, opinion Dropshot has played both champions throughout his this entire collegiate lol series uh, the Urgot, not necessarily the most amazing performances he's had on it but definitely the vladimir can completely understand that one yeah, Vladimir is a Vladimir is actually something I ban out a lot in my own solo queue games because he's just a, a good Vladimir can just do so much work. It's very, very uh, it can be very demoralizing to play against a Vladimir because of how strong they can scale into the into the mid late game. But it looks like there's gonna be a first pick Zaya coming out for the side of Truman State and a uh, pretty standard, uh, I guess you would say, solid ADC pick. Maybe not the first pick, the uh, top, top, top S tier ADC right now, but it's still a very, very uh, contested pick among a lot of teams. Especially when paired up with the Rakan. The Rakan Zaya bot lane definitely considered the S tier. Sure, Zaya herself not necessarily considered that, but when paired up with her duo, always makes such a devastating lane, but. We even saw, if you were watching the NALCS, that lane being bullied around heavily by a Caitlyn Morgana. So, who knows, maybe over for South Florida, they decide to go for something like that. But Sejuani, I consider a very safe pick of this early on. Yeah, LeBlanc coming in right there second. That one's a little bit different. Sejuani, pretty much S-tier jungler right now. Uh, maybe changing a little bit with some of the patches that we've had over the couple weeks. But very, very, very solid tank in the jungle that you can have that can actually put out a lot of damage. And Truman State's going to answer it with a cane. That's a, that's that's some uh, interesting uh, choices there. They're going for a little bit of a... Not a non-standard meta pick, I would say, but I, I mean, unless you watch Worlds and you think you're a Gigamite Marine, then obviously <laughs> that's a different story. Well, also it's Rosen on the cane. He played it twice last week, both games on stream. He played it and was definitely the carry for Truman. And with 8.4, now 8.5, you gotta imagine these more carry-oriented junglers are more facilitated. They can have the tank at the top lane. The Geef King likes to play Scion, likes to play more of that kind of style. Same with Highsmith, loves these high engage type support so not too surprised to see that and the Malzahar going into the LeBlanc especially with LeBlanc pick so early gives an easy counter for Arcadius yeah it's kind of a, a hard a rock and a hard place if you pick your mid that early because obviously there's free counter picks especially on a side where I, they, I would hope they're going for the counter pick uh for top lane now for South Florida because when you're on the red side you do have that counter pick so it's odd to see that mid p picked up so early but they do ban out the Rakan in the second phase of bans really really strong idea there obviously Zaya Rakan as you mentioned it, Zyra by herself isn't very, very, not always the scariest, but Zyra Rakan, when you get those extra little abilities that they have, the quirks that they have, the extra range on the shield for Rakan to Zyra, it, it, it really enables you to do a lot as uh, a, a, a champion like Rakan. So. Both. Yeah, both sides focusing on the bot side of the map. Double 80 carry bands from Truman, while the double support coming in from South Florida. Since they've already locked in that support of Lulu, they're feeling very confident. McKill's. Wanting to have pretty much a McHale's type support where he'll be able to buff up Logan. Well, instead of going for a AD carry, they decide to get Orn, where they can easily get countermatched. Mm, yeah, exactly. Again, the, I just mentioned that they I, you would think they would want to keep that last pick to counter pick top lane or something like that. Orn is, though, very standard tanky, kind of fits that role, can kind of almost go against anything. I mean, there are a few picks that could punish him really bad, but I... I I feel like they should have left that pick to the end because I, I mean, I, I can understand they want to see what the bot lane is they're going to be going into, but it just feels like you could try and help your top laner out a little bit there and uh, give them a, a preferred matchup at least. Shen walked in by Mucky. Could have been flexed towards the top or the support role, but with Highsmith hovering this Alistar, now locking it in. Obviously, going to try to see if they can have the Shen bully around the Orn in that top side of the map. Can cancel out a little bit of the auto attack damage that he gets with the brittle stack. 
All right, and one second. I'm trying to f mess up, uh, mess with some <laughs> issues here as I have some sound issues still. I apologize. I had it's the many fans that you have in the audience cheering you on. Oh yes, the fans from my PC. Would... <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get that going to distract it. Sorry about that, guys. I know I'm having a little bit of audio issues here. I don't know why there is no uh, there's no because oh, there's no music. That's why. <laughs> it's quite all right as we get the last pick. Gonna be the Lucian for Logan. Not something we necessarily see too much in the bot role anymore. Usually being flexed around towards the top or the mid. Instead, it seems South Florida, especially Logan, feels quite confident on him. But he's got to be careful that low range can easily be abused by Zaya and Alistar. Yeah, the Zaya Alistar combo is a is a kind of combo that you f does make sense when you put it together because Alistar kind of does the same kind of dive in, uh, put that pressure on that Rakan does as well. So it makes sense to pair that with the the Zaya. Um, but we'll see how the early game goes because Lucians normally like to be aggressive. I personally haven't seen I've seen a lot of Lucians pop up, but I haven't been too confident in his ability to be this S tier carry that we've seen. Uh, out of other carries like Isaiah or something along the lines of a Trist or something like that. Obviously, yeah, Trist was banned. Caitlyn, Caitlyn yeah. could have been chosen. That's Caitlyn. That's got great range. Caitlyn Lulu is a very scary lane to deal with too. Yeah, the the range comp like you mentioned in the LCS that they use it to abuse it basically uh, against exactly. the shorter range of the Zaya and her inability to like save herself until later on in the game. So yeah, there's quite a number of picks that I could have thought better like the twitch could have been great he just got buffed in 8.5 kogma has been coming back into his own prowess got a little bit of tweaks in 8.5 so the lucian seems more like a comfort for loken than anything else not necessarily caring what the tier is but sometimes that's more important where you feel comfortable enough on a champion doesn't matter the matchup you can go into something like zaya maybe even you get outranged by a Caitlyn, but if you're confident enough in with your Lulu, you can try to bully it around the Zaya and Alistar. Yeah, you can definitely... Uh, Lulu is is definitely that a bully in lane early on, especially against a melee uh, hero or a melee champion like Alistar that can't really get in, especially not to level 3. You kind of need all three of your abilities to really go in as the Alistar. Uh, Lucian and Lulu should be able to dance around and be able to, at least in the early game here, kind of control this bot lane for the side of South Florida and hopefully give the ability for Sejuani to kind of roam around, maybe help out LeBlanc early on or help out that Ornn in top lane. Uh, attacking those... Uh, attacking a Shen early can really put a deficit in his game plan, but also attacking the... Uh, the source of the global ultimate is also not too terrible of idea because obviously Shen can't ult himself. So we'll see whether how they decide to do that, or if we're just gonna have something kind of standard and you know, or you know, kind of just up in the air at this point to see where people are gonna go, where the where the where they're gonna try and put most of their focus in. Obviously, Truman has that uh, advantage in the mid lane, so you would think that uh, South Florida would want to try and counter that in some way. Exactly, and you talk about malicious on the set twenty, but the thing that just makes me worry for him is Rosen on Kane. Third time on stream we see him on this champion. Nobody banning that away. We saw how powerful he could be on that last week. Absolutely dominating Principia with that champion where he was so abusive he went into the jungle consistently. Not only that, he'd get the lead. He'd, get, he'd steal buffs here and there. He'd steal camps. Then go for the ganks afterwards. Get his lanes ahead and it all boiled down to that where they just exploded it and it would be Close up until that one moment, that one team fight where Rosen and Arcadius both popped off, where at the game ended within two minutes afterwards. Yeah, and that, that's what you do with these carry junglers. You want to get ahead, you want to get rolling, and then you want them to keep popping off. Because that just, even if you're just doing it by yourself and you're getting help and you're helping kills and you may be kill, kill stealing, kill securing, whatever you want to call it as a jungler, you may, you may get those kills, but it, it all is to kind of divert focus a little bit. And that's the good thing about a carry is you can be that threat, but it also provides space for your team to work around and build up their own items and be able to help you in those big team fights when you can't do it all alone. Obviously, team games are kind of a thing like that so exactly so you can only do so much you can only get so far if you're ahead sure you can get yourself ahead you can try to 1v9 all you want but you do need your team with you as well so it's going to be kind of interesting to see what comes out of rosen if he's getting his laners ahead getting mucky arcadius to really keep up with him or maybe we see malicious he's watched the stream last week he knows what happened and he's going to be able to constantly keep the wards around so that they keep rosen in range right it looks like i'm having a slight issue with my 
in-game stuff will get you there and in just a second guys we are just still just at the loading screen right now uh i am having an issue though because apparently the resolution got changed again so if i were to change it over you guys would that see happened, absolutely nothing that happened to me not too long ago with the new patch where it put me back in the window and i hate when it does that that's exactly like, no. what happened to me it put me back in the window I hate when it does that. It, you're just like, no, no, I don't want windowed. I want to be in borderless. Thank you very much, Eric. I'm trying to see if maybe I can move my cane up, if that helps. Okay, let's see if we can get this rolling here, make sure it's gonna work. Hello? It, does that work better? There it goes. There's one, there's two. And I did turn you up already, so they should be able to hear you quite a bit easier now. Make sure I got the Truman on the right side. All right, well, there we go, guys. We should be good to go, and now we can actually see what's actually happening in-game. As we enter in the matchup, it doesn't look like we're going to have any crazy invades quite yet, but we are in first game of the this round of 16 Teemo Cup matchup between Truman State and the University of South Florida. Should be really exciting. The 4-2... Truman State back when they were in the regular split, going for the regular collegiate lull, but now in the Teemo Cup, they're sitting 1-0, as well as South Florida, who finished 3-3 in that regular season. So, a little bit of a disparity in that, but you never know how these teams might pair up against one another, whether maybe it just happened to be the opponents that Truman State went against, well, over for the side of South Florida, maybe they had a little bit more difficult competition. Yeah, there's always that case, you know, the co collegiate anything sport-wise, esport-wise is that way. You have teams, you know, it's just people competing because they like to compete. You know, you may not have the same skill level everywhere, but it, it can, uh, you can see those blips of brilliance from some of these smaller teams. I mean, that's that's the glory of these tournament brackets and stuff like that. It's, uh, you know, it's what college is. It's March Madness, guys. It's not exactly the traditional way, but it works out here, too. We might see some upsets. You're gone, going for a very interesting start, going for the Dark Seal with triple pots on this little block. Really wants to see if he can bully around Arcadius. He's not playing his Aurelian Soul this week, changing that up, knowing that it doesn't have the best matchup into LeBlanc. Yeah, Le LeBlanc definitely not uh, something you want to play early in Soul into, I would say, too much. It just feels like too many movements to get around. I mean, obviously, it kind of depends on the early in Soul player and how much you play that champion. I personally don't play him a whole lot, so I just don't like LeBlanc in general. But obviously, Malzahar is a little bit safer in that matchup, and uh, why not take something easy, like uh, a an easy matchup in your first game of a best of three? See, I like the old LeBlanc. I miss her. I want her back. Back when she was full assassin, just go crazy. Pop off, but pop up, pop up, and kill everybody instantly. Basically, exactly. It was so much fun. What I don't understand what people didn't like about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're on the if you ever been on the receiving end of that, you you can understand why. <laughs> See, this is why you pick with one. See, easy, can't easy. easy banner pick. <laughs> there you go. Pick band, completely balanced. Let's go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so sadly not gonna have that. Instead, we get the more mage style LeBlanc, who still has a lot of damage and is starting to bully around Arcadius a little bit in this lane. Doing a good job at wasting his mana, trying to make him burn that as often as possible, so he has to try to clear out the wave that way. Yeah, and obviously we do see the uh, minion Demetializer on the Malzahar for Arcadius. He's trying to, kind of standard you see on him lately, trying to get that extra push from the Malefic Visions going. Uh, bounce it from the minions and keep the wave click on. There's actually also a minion, de minion dematerializer on Shen, which is something that I'm not used to seeing, but I can understand how it would help because you can struggle a little bit in wave clear as a Shen later on in the game because you you normally don't build that much damage unless you're able to build that uh, Titanic Hydra, but we'll see. And sometimes you see, especially these top laners, get the minion dematerializer, not necessarily for the wave and getting the push early into the game, but holding on for later, especially with the banner command having been such a powerful tool in 8.4, getting a little bit of a nerf towards the little cannon boy in 8.5, so he's not going to be doing quite as much damage as before. He's still very powerful and very hard to clear, especially for Arcades on Malzahar or to keep King on Shen, who's got to get really close and auto attack it to get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. And a little bit more back and forth again. I'm, the, the trades are happening, and it's kind of interesting to see that Arcadius is actually feels like he's a little bit behind on the trades as he's not actually getting a lot of those minion kills, and he's a little bit behind right now. And he's also holding on to those minion dematerializer stacks as well. Probably doing exactly what I was saying before, trying to see if they can hold on to one for late game. Maybe even to keep King. If he pops it right now, I'd be very surprised. Sometimes you hold on to that as the top laner so you can get rid 
of the super minions, get rid of the ba uh, banner command minions, but use all of them to try to get a push into Dropshot, who's burned all his mana just to keep up with the Shen. Yeah, that makes sense. He's just trying to put a little bit of a pressure on him to keep keep him going as as a Shen, and I'm sure as uh, as a as an Orn as well. You kind of just you're, you're you're fine just farming early game. You're not really too worried about it. I mean, a little bit you can be aggressive like this. I got the knock up onto the Keep King, but I don't know if there's going to be the kill pressure just yet. But the Keep King continuing to put the fight in has to shadow dash out of there, so he doesn't go down quite yet. Right on the wings, Malicious is nearby and can possibly join in the fight if he needs to. Especially if the Keep King keeps getting himself that low. Yeah, and in one second here as I fix a little bit of issues still, because I keep forgetting no how to turn off the time controls and stuff. It's all good. Sometimes all right, there we go. Oh, a flash mid. Arcadius is going, getting you really hard in by your gun. One more auto attack. The flash coming in from Malicious to get it. So South Florida, they find themselves at a nice even early lead. Yeah, it was a little bit of an interesting idea there because obviously uh, the flashes came in from both sides on Arcadius and you're gone. But uh, it wasn't, he was actually going to live. But fortunately for him, Malicious was there with the easy flash to Dwani KS to continue the the hopes and dreams of the first blood going on there and it, it does and now that's a pretty big league even though he just gets the assist for it for uh you're gone on this leblanc he's got a good cs lead and forces out the tp from malzahar yeah you're gone also had gotten that tp back earlier we were talking about the fight with the keep king and drop shot in top lane but during that time you're gone got back got himself that tp into the lane so he had the amplifying tome and a little bit more mana so he could fight into arcadius and that really did help him with that fight. Had a lot more pressure into this Malzahar to force him low and help out Malicious pick up that first blood. Yeah, and it works out perfectly in their favor. They're, they had that mid lane where they said that, what we mentioned, they might have been at a disadvantage. And they're kind of just hovering around top mid lane and uh, was Malicious. And he just makes that, that play finally. When you're gone, found that opening after buying. He found an opening, got the, kill, uh, the damage in, and then... Malicious just in the right place, right time to help clean up kills, and uh, it's, it's a good way to start this match for the side of South Florida. They really want your gone to do well in, in mid lane, and putting down Malzahar early is never a bad thing, but here comes the gank. Here comes Rosen, trying to see if they can get onto Logan and onto Mikhail's who flashed away. Now, somebody, somebody we haven't really talked about this game is Rosen. Look how well he's been farming up on this king. He hasn't really made himself known too well because he's just been trying to scale up. He's got level 6 already, so that Umbral Trespass is available to him. Yeah, that, that, that's a very scary thing to deal with from Kane. Kane's able to put out a lot of damage and then dodge out of a lot of damage as well. Uh, we'll see if he's going to try and rotate back as they do end up stealing the blue buff as they are invading this blue side jungle from South Florida. Not just that, they gave it over to Arcadius. So this Malzahar who gave over the first blood to Malicious is going to be really happy in it to Yurgon who's no longer got mana, has to back and no TP, so... Arcadia is probably just going to shove out the wave, go back himself, and feel very confident. Yeah, that, a little bit of counterplay there, just being able to take the jungle. They, both sides have good vision of the opposing side's blue jungle for a while there. That's where most of their vision is focused on. But here here comes the hard engage onto Mikhail, who does not have the flash, so he falls. Hi, Smith, picking up the kill. Unchained, going to lock down Logan. No ult for him as well, so he can't clear it out. But he did have flash, so he was safe enough. But still giving over kill in the spot lane. Mucky and Highsmith find the lead. Yeah, and that's exactly what you, they needed. They uh, flash down on Mikhail's, and they just able to go in on their own. Alistar lands that combo, alt from uh, the Zaya, and just easy kill on the Flash's Lulu. So Brosen, even though he wasn't there for the kill initially, does end up helping them uh, his bot lane secure an early kill onto the support. And they're going to do a lot of damage to this, this uh, tower as well, it seems like. Now, Logan can't step up either. He doesn't have the call, so he can't clear out the wave just yet. Has to wait until Mikhail shows up so that they can get the minions needed. He was a massive lead to Mucky. Even though he didn't get the kill, he's going to be very happy with that situation. Exactly. I, it, it, it's, not always, it's not always the best when your support gets the kill, but sometimes you just take the kills when you can get them. But obviously, the BF sword done and then being able to go back now and getting closer to you the Essence Reaver is going to be really, really nice for Zaya. Put you in a really comfortable position. But here comes the gank middle. Uh, Rosen trying to see if he can get onto your gun, but he gets locked up by the Ethereal Chains. Takes a decent amount of poke from your gun. Doesn't want to keep going in onto that. Give her for free kills to LeBlanc. Doesn't sound very nice. 
Yeah, I think they were just trying to get the ultis off there. He was hoping for a knockup and then the follow up from the Malzahar, maybe. But oh, here comes another ulti. Glacial prison on to Rosen. Does he have the shadow lock to get himself some help? Here comes the stand united. You're gone in the area. Had to flash over the wall, but the shield was enough to keep him alive. The Keep King was interrupted by Drop Shot, who's now fighting this foreign in top side. It's gonna be a wet noodle fight for the most part. Neither of them have truly that much damage just yet. Even though they're getting themselves about half health. No kill threat just yet. Yeah, they're very, very able to trade damage like this because of uh, Shen did go for that Tiamat early, helping him clear the wave. But unfortunately, there's a little bit too many minions on the side of uh, for drops out, so his minions able to help do that extra damage. We have another kind of fight breaking out both in top and by the Dragon Pit. Yeah, but it's gonna be the support fighting the jungler and top side to Keep King. Here comes the Billy Goat, but it did not connect. Great flash away from to Keep King to stay alive. The drop shot without that ult, he's probably gonna push the wave in and back off. Yeah, good flash by the Keef King there, waiting for the second hit from the Ram already, just to get out of its way. Very, very, very safe play. Obviously, a little bit of trouble. But here comes another gank. Yeah, did not connect the headbutt. Pulverize, good slow onto Rosen. They try to keep him away, but that's a smite to slow down into the flash and alt from Mikhail's. So gonna keep Lucian alive. I'm surprised he doesn't use the calling just to get a little bit of poke. There it comes, just to see if it can hit on to Highsmith, but. Sadly, this is a cow. He doesn't take that much from a little bit of life. Yeah, cows do not care about getting shot that much too early. Uh, <laughs> he, he's he's pretty pretty beefy on this Alistar early on. I mean, uh, not a whole lot good of damage yet. Bones. Yeah, he does have good meat on his bones, but no, not enough damage on this uh, Lucian yet to really really be any of a threat yet. As we come back in the middle, as we come out, LeBlanc going for the 1v1 again. A little bit of damage going on. Ooh. Right use of that silence that actually connected onto your gun as he went back onto his W. So got a lot of poke onto this LeBlanc who no longer has to teleport. Use that to get back into lane. There is teleport for Arcadia, so imagine he's gonna probably just shove out the wave so he can go back and get some items so he can fight a little bit stronger into your gun who hasn't yet completed that gun blade. It's getting close, but it's not done quite yet. And then this is where we see that power from Malzahar, the, the counter pick into LeBlanc. He is down. He gave up that early kill, but now he's just shoving her under turret constantly. And he has the ultimate threat now too, which makes it so LeBlanc has to be a little bit more careful with her diving in and trying to trade blows because she can end up getting herself in a really bad position. Yeah, but now having that Bell's Water Cutlass, we'll have a little bit more sustained in lane. Even if it's only on LeBlanc, at least it gives her some life steal so she can start poking out doing a couple more auto attacks a minute and see her and there keep herself quite alive but the thing that's sticking out to me is rosen continuing to put this pressure onto malicious in this jungle putting the deep wards on to the wolves and trying to make sure that the sejuani can't ever get a gank yeah really smart thing to do all you really need is uh like many many of these long range tank junglers or with their long range initiations all you need to is vision to know where they are there's a little bit of traits happen in the bottom that is by herself yeah, exactly, but it doesn't matter because look who roamed top, mid, into mid and they get the tower for it. Yeah, and that was that was a lot of Arcadius' work right there, pushing that LeBlanc in and then uh, that Highsmith just making the, noting that, oh hey, if I come roam up mid, we can probably get this turret super easy. Why not have first turret of the game go to my team? And uh, more gold going to the side of Truman State. And even though they gave up first blood and it's only one to one in kills, early turret and uh, some farming puts up put them up top by about 2k now and here comes a, ooh, another flash flash away from mikhail just came back up this is a teleport in from drop shot trying to see if they can turn this around on high smith knocking him up but here comes behind is malicious and coming in is your gun with the teleport maybe he's gonna help them out but they lose rosen before it all ends a lot of damage still onto the keep king as he tries to go for the knockout but he is low taken down finally but that was a great route coming in from mucky as they turn it around getting one kill onto the support maybe they can get a little bit more arcadius has got to be so careful as he gets knocked up the heal is not going to save him today. And they're blowing the breath from below on to Mucky. One more auto and that will finish off your gun. As the flash helped out Mucky to turn it around. Even though it looked like a tricky situation for Truman State. They somehow make it so that they at least turn one kill. Actually two for two. Uh, it does end up going two for three I believe is what happens. Because it was one one now it's three oh, four. Oh yes Rosen. But, uh, yes, yeah, Rosen, yeah, Rosen, yeah. Rosen did fall quite quickly there. Uh, but yeah it was a, a kind of back and forth fight. I wasn't exactly entirely sure who was going to win there, but there were a lot of low health people from the side of South Florida there. And uh, when it looked like Arcadius decided to ult on the LeBlanc to try and stop her from going in and killing people, uh, when he probably could have, I mean, it, 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 it's up in the air on what he could have done there, but it, it felt like they could have probably cleaned up a couple more kills for the side of Truman State if they would have had a little bit better focus. 
I think it was also just Rosen a little bit too greedy. Him falling so early in the fight made it so they lose a lot of that damage. He's got the Warrior's Enchant on this king going into the Serrated Dirk next. That's a lot of potential threat onto Logan and you're gone. That was gone so quickly. Yeah, he got in, he used his ult and had to pop out to try and save himself, and then he got instantly CC'd by the Lulu, polymorphed into a slow, and there's just pretty much no way he could get out of that, like you said, with this full damage build. So, uh, again, probably have to play this a little bit more carefully for Brozen, and I feel like Truman will be in a good spot. They lost a little bit of their gold league there, obviously losing the extra member, but they're still in the driver's seat with their gold lead. They should be able to try and force Dragon here with, their, with the jungle pressure they have, and we should see more of bros in here uh, trying to make a good play. Uh, hopefully not too deep this time. Yeah, but Deep King getting engaged on in the top side of the map. Got hit up by the call of the Forge. Got into the Permafrost, so he can't really move. The shields aren't helping him out. One more auto attack. Who are they going to give it to? It looks like Drop Shot wants that. He finally finishes off the ninja topside. Now Rosen fighting Yurgon has the Umbral Trash Pass that he goes for. Trying to get that damage onto Yurgon who jumps over the wall. He's gonna go backwards. He is gonna go backwards, juking away from Rosen. But he's on the chase as Flavius flashes on to Logan. And finally Yurgon might go down to the Alistar. But he's getting kited around pretty well. The Ethereal Chain's connecting and no kills from that bot lane exchange coming in. Yeah, no kills for either side. Logan was able to get out of the Malzahar ulti, and so far, it's been a pretty oh, good dodge. Yep, yeah, <laughs> gonna, gonna take the execute there. Smart idea there. Uh, his team is gonna take that top turret after that gank onto the Keith King Shen, but there's a lot of damage going to this bot tower now, and I don't think they can hold it, especially now with the Malzahar there. Uh, good Not work there all. for Truman oh to take God. that turret. Ooh, oh. They're gonna go for more. That's gonna be it. That's the Malefic Vision finishing it off onto Mikhail, so they get the tower and get the kills and that gives the lead to Truman. Yeah, uh, they, they, they they have the lead, yeah, the overall lead from that fight. They go up a little bit more gold overall out of all the fights across the map that happened there. Uh, even though they didn't get the gold from LeBlanc, they do get the gold from a kind of greedy Mikhail's right there. And they're also going to get this dragon, which will be uh, future helpful in the turret pushing, obviously, with the Mountain Drake. And Malzahar has been enjoying that uh, immensely. Despite giving over first blood, he's enjoying a CS lead now and is able to just kind of go where he wants and push turrets down. Malicious was trying to take the Rift Herald while that dragon went down, but sadly was spotted out by Highsmith, who made a great roam. Now the bot lane going tops for Truman State, so they can try to see if they can get more towers. It seems that South Florida, they called this out well in advance. Drop shot already in the bot side of the map. Yeah, they already made that rotation uh, to the uh, to the bottom side. I, I'm kind of interesting how they decided to do that. I guess they're just going to try and push with drop shot and try and defend with their ADC carry here. But uh, not. It, it, it kind of depends on where they want to go because it just seems like an odd uh, lane transition to me. But if they kind of want to meet Mucky and Highsmith, and I'm assuming that's why they did they they made this transition is because that's where Mucky and Highsmith are on their way It's to the top lane. Yeah, but Highsmith did burn his ult right there. Trying to see if he can go unchained because he was afraid that Yurgon was going to go hyper aggressive on them, but Yurgon made a good call and backed off pretty quickly. Grossing pretty close. Yeah. He got close. He wanted to get that ward onto Malicious. They know he's there, though. Oh, now, wow. For whatever reason, Arcadius, why are you there? Permafrost locking him down for quite some time. Probably going to be the ult to keep it going. And it's Mikhail's that finished off the kill. Rosen has himself in a very tricky situation. The teleport for Yurgon was completed. The same with the Stan United. And they might turn it around onto Yurgon, but the wild growth kept him alive. And Dekeep King is no longer the king. He's dethroned by Malicious. Oh, that was a brutal mistake from Arcadius there. Just walking into a bush, but they just had a ward get killed by two people. Why would you walk into that brush? I mean, you're a Malzahar, but you're not tanky, man. That was just... That was silly, and it ends up costing them three kills for nothing, and uh, might not even cost them more as uh, Mucky's going in here. Wants to go really hard for some reason. Now, I guess he's trying to see if he can keep that Rift Herald alive, but is it worth it against four members? Yeah, I don't know if he's trying to peel him off or do damage, but that, I don't think it's going to work out in his favor. Oh, here comes a flash. And a flash into the Ethereal Change. He does not have the Feather Storm anymore. Does he have the Blade Call? Not in time. The Rift Herald's still alive. Teleport completed. Find Keep King. Low health bars for South Florida. And here comes Arcadius with that Endergrass as they finish off Logan. Malefic Visions on the Malicious. And finally, Rosen, who's gone for so long, comes back. Teleport in from Drop. Only knocks up one member. Flavius is taking too much damage and slapped down by the hammer of Drop Shot. It seems that South Florida, even with the messy fight, they weren't able to secure that Richter. 
Yeah, that that was crazy. I can't believe they turned to try and not stop that Riptail. The fight still kind of continues as Chabrosin yeah. and Tahikin are still fighting drop shot here, but he's pretty tanky. Oh, oh good time. Flash into the taunt. Has to use the wild growth. That just came back up. I don't think he can keep himself alive for much longer. Just needs one more auto. Shadow walk from Rosen as he continues this chase onto the kill. Just needs one more. You see, hits one last Q onto him, and they turn it onto drop shot with three members here. So Orn couldn't survive. Somehow, Truman uh, State, they get some kills out of weird fights after weird fights. Yeah, more weird fights happening. It's these crazy extended fights that we're seeing, it feels like. It's like the, the refusal to, to, to not finish the objective and go for the kill instead onto Mucky there. Comes out and bites uh, Florida in the butt there because obviously they were... They just I, they weren't ready for the double TP, it seemed like. So when Arcadius and Keith King showed up, it was just a completely different story. And they just got crushed in that fight. Honestly, just got crushed for overextending. They should have just finished the Rift Herald. They didn't need to turn for Mucky. Mucky was trying to be a nuisance, and he did the job that he needed to do. Yeah, he did. He was a nuisance, and he bought enough time. He ended up costing him his life, but then his team cleans house. So it's not too bad in the end. There's still only about... 2.4k gold difference and that is for the side of Truman State that is ahead even though they are down a kill they do have that extra turret and an extra dragon going on for them as well and uh, as we see the ADCs getting into their one and a half items almost to their two item spikes we'll see if Logan or Mucky is going to be the one that try and takes this uh, the team fights to the other team or at least do the damage that their team needs because uh, so far it's been the, the Arcadius and the Brozen show I feel like and Keith King with his amazing taunts so far that last taunt onto the Lulu was was beautiful Man. big thing for me right now South Florida like you had mentioned before being down a tower probably gonna be down another one if Bucky's able to finish this one off but the fact that they're down a mid lane tower opens it up so much for Truman to put down deep wards so they can get these flanks TP about to come back up for Arcadia since he has that unsealed spellbook, so that reduced cooldown for it makes it a lot more effective for him to go for these engages. Yeah, like I said, that, that flanking maneuver they did last time completely caught South Florida off guard. I'm assuming they probably thought it was just a single teleport, but it was actually two. But here comes Heisman getting, getting caught out, having to flash out of that one. Forced to flash to keep himself alive, but we heard at the call of the Ford God Rosen and was finished off before he could get the Uncle Trespass and hit Stand United into the double knockup onto Logan, but the wild growth with the exhaust onto him. Gotta be careful. They land at the glacial prison. So they finish off the cow. They finished off Flavius and they turned their attention to the Baron. Wow, what a what a misstep from the side of Truman State. They just had people kind of all spread out. Uh, Highsmith got cut out, and then Brozen got cut out, and then everyone else got cut out, it felt like. And it was just losing people left and right. Now they're going to see if they can secure this early Baron at 22 minutes. They should be able to without any anything else, because there's only uh, the Shen and the Zaya left alive. They end up getting the Baron, and now they have a gold lead for the side of South Florida. Not very much. We'll see what they're able to do with it right now, though. They really need to get some of these outer turrets down uh, uh, and uh, push their lead in at least to try and control these fights more and keep going going forward instead of where they were where they were kind of waiting for fights and getting cut out and there's a lot of ambient gold left up for south florida that they can clean up they got to get control of the sideways and look at thought look at how those minions are pushing up for truman with the baron buff should be pretty easy for them to clear up some of these outer towers and try to turn their attention but if rosen has anything to say about it he steals away a dragon and flashes out so he keeps himself alive and gets a second dragon for the team. Yeah, uh, the kind of lack of vision there for the side of South Florida. Malicious wasn't ready for it and uh, gets out smited in that trade. Uh, they are the same level, so it should have been pretty close. But Brozen coming out on top, giving his team that extra dragon. It was only a Cloud Drake, but he did get it. Uh, they, they, they did give it over to the other teams. So that, that gives the threat of Elder Drake later for the side of Truman State of stacking dragons for it as well. That's the thing. You gotta kind of be playing towards this late game. And you look over to Truman. They definitely are. They're going very aggressive, very greedy, trying to play into the face of South Florida. Is it really an indication of wanting to stall out this game until that 35 minute mark? Yeah, they, they seem like they want to be aggressive, and you can understand that with a jungler uh, like the Kane. You want to you wanna press the issue, but as we saw earlier, it can come back to bite him, where if he gets caught out by your gone on this LeBlanc with uh, two and a half items completed now, uh, he, he, he got blown up really fast. He still has only... Ma uh, the only defense he has is, is the magic tread on those Merc treads, so... Not to mention, your gone has that Dark Seal. Six stacks on that. 
and feeling very confident with how much damage he can do. Trying to see if he can burst out Rosen, who's going to be so squishy that that's way to drag though. Probably not going to help out too much. They are trying to go on to drop shot, take away some of the TP flank ability that can come in, but Yorgon's going to go for the TP in behind. Umbral chest pass on to drop shot. Call of the four shot, not going to connect on to Rosen, but Rosen taking down so quickly, giving two more stacks to Yorgon. Yeah, and that that's that's the careful thing you have to do. There's a fight, another another fight breaks out in the middle. It looks like it looks like Heismith's gonna be able to just alt out of that one. But that's something you have to be careful about about ganking these tank lanes. They you just use Brosen, who's this full damage spec with the dust blade, the warrior enchant, enchant and another serrated Dirk on there. Yeah, uh, drop shot's health didn't really move a whole lot that fight, so that was kind of an odd decision there. You normally don't want to try and go for the tank unless it's like the Shen where they're they're the source of the global ultimate to save people. So. Ooh, Lucky going aggressive into your gone, trying to see if they can fight. The Sand United was cancelled from it to keep King. Drop shot making sure to keep the Shen in the side wave as this mid tier one most likely going to go down to South Florida. Yeah, and that's a thing we forgot. Uh, another thing about all these pushes and what's happening right now is they do have the Baron buff. They're doing a 3 1 split, kind of 4 1 split, sort of right now. But they're going to hopefully be able to get a couple more than just one turn out of this. As, oh my goodness. He Flavius just... was deleted. What? That damage was insane. I think he died so fast that Malicious missed his ultimate because of it. I think so too. I think he <laughs> thought he had that, but he was just deleted. That absurd amount of damage that can come out of your gone if he gets the stacks from that passive. Now they're turning their attention onto this tier 2, maybe even going to finish off Mucky, who is forced to use that Feather Storm to get himself out of dodge. But here comes a flash forward from your gone. The Root able to save his life for now. And has to run back his base with South Florida, barreling around down at mid, trying to see if they can take out the tower of Yeah, and Not connected to that, but right. Unfortunately, the the uh, Baron buff has actually run out for the side of South Florida, and they're unable to finish off these last two inner turrets right now. Uh, that would have been a really, really helpful gold boost for them. They did get a couple kills, and now they're up about 2.8 thousand gold now, give or take. Maybe almost 3k. So we'll almost go, 3k. Yeah, we'll give them 3k, but not, you know, not a bad Baron power play to happen. They got some of it done, but now, uh-oh, Malicious, Malicious overstays. Yeah, I'm not sure what you were trying to accomplish there, except for giving over some kills towards Truman. Though, I will say, there's not really much that Truman can get at the moment. That's true. There's not a whole lot they can look for to try and push out or anything like that. They need to try and uh, regain control of Vision, though, as there is a lot of Red Wards from the side of South Florida in their bot side jungle. That might be something that they need to work out. They are c dealing with the waves right now, which is exactly the only thing they really can do, but they, I, I would hope that they get a little bit more Vision uh, and hopefully make those plays like they did before, the team plays, the double teleport, something like that where they're all together and not getting caught out, because it feels like they've just been getting caught out constantly now, and that's that's really something you can't do when you're the team that wants to be aggressive, is get one of your aggressive people caught out. Exactly, especially into a LeBlanc who's sitting on nine snacks now on this Dark Seal, so she's going to be very scary. We already saw her blow up Arcadius in that last fight, if you can even call it that. Yeah, and Arcadius does end up getting that split push top down, so we're looking pretty even on turrets now, so just that bear gold lead to a couple kills. Ooh, Mucky, gotta be careful. Ooh. Yorgon wanted to go for that, but with Yorgon being so far forward, great collapse from Truman State to finish off one of the major threats from South Florida. Uh, if not one of, if not the major threat from South Florida, this LeBlanc has been doing a ton of things, and uh-oh, oh, another ulti cut. That's two threats gone. The one for Truman, the one for South Florida. Great pick coming in from Malicious and Logan. Highsmith tries to keep this tower alive. Maybe Rosen can finish off onto Logan. He flashes forward. Does have that Umbral Trespass with Talent connecting. Wild Growth to try to see if he can do anything, but Mikhail's is following in that as well as that AD carry as he gets shut down by Rosen. Drop Shot has to run away because he doesn't have a team that can defend anymore. Flashing over the wall. But Truman State, they're making a statement as they come back into this. Yeah, I, I think the side of South Florida might have gotten a little overconfident there. They killed the uh, they killed Mucky pretty easily, but then they came in to try they excuse me as they tried to try and keep the fight going and maybe get that tier two turret in the middle, but they weren't able to do it because they don't have the damage to keep kind of pressing. Whereas uh, Brozen still does a lot of damage, and if they lock down Logan like they did, there was there's almost no damage coming out of the side of South Florida and it, you could see how how badly they got rolled over there when they still had a threat like Brozen up for the side of Truman State. Tower has spawned up so 
Seems that Rosen and Keeping want to secure themselves the third dragon of the game. Not just that, the second mountain pick. But along the other side, Monkey gets picked off by your gone. That calls coming in from Monkey getting him caught up. Your gone trying to see if he can dodge away, but a little bit of damage from Rosen trying to see if he can get the Envoy Trespass, but he doesn't need it. He has damage. This is the College of Lord God interrupted by another crest. They try to see if they can go for a little bit more slowing down up, but it's pretty sneaky going forward. Trying to see if they can damage on the Logan. Umbral Trespass finishes off, getting carry and finishing off more with that Q. This could be Twinsky turning it around. Drop shot can't run today. He's being burned down by the red buff. The shield just for a little bit more ticks. And Frozen picks up his seventh kill of the game. Yeah, Brozen has just started to go off in this match. He is still full damage as well. He It seems like he's being a little bit more patient, trying to wait for his time to go in and find those kills, using his ultimate to secure some and dodge a lot of those CCs as well. Uh, just It seems like a completely different player almost than what we were seeing earlier. He was just farming his life out, and then he got caught out a couple times, and now he's just making the statement of, hi guys, I'm, I'm huge now, I'm going to kill your backline, and you guys aren't going to know what happened. That's crazy. Like, they're allowing Frozen to be able to come back into this game so efficiently. He was down, I think, 2, 4, and 1 at one point. He hasn't died since. He's gotten 5 kills in the meanwhile. Getting himself right back into this game and being that threat on Kane that we know him to be once he gets some items. Yeah, and now he has even more items completed as he does have that Yumu's come out and the Hex Drinker as well. So now he has a little bit more defense, which will help him a ton against Yurgon, which has been his big issue, I feel like. Yurgon has been the one finding him and picking him out, but when he's been kind of sitting in the back now and waiting, Yurgon can't find those picks and goes for someone else, and then the counter pick happens, I guess is what you would call it, as Brozen goes in looking for him. So it kind of turns out, it, it looks like as long... I feel like Truman just needs to take take everything in and just like buy themselves some times and not get caught out because it just feels like every fight they have someone to get caught out. Mucky twice in a row in the last couple of fights, Brozen in the early game and stuff like that. If they could five man fight, I feel like they would blow this game wide open. It's almost the third time as your gone went in onto Mucky. Trying to see if he can get the assassination, knowing how pivotal Mucky can be, especially when it comes to taking down these towers, trying to get some more gold into the buckets of Truman. As Highsmith gets the wraparound onto your gone, the ethereal change will slow him down. It doesn't matter because they pick up the tier two and top. Yeah, they're using that Baron to clear out these last tier twos. They're going to move to mid now to try and get all that pushing in as well. Uh, really effective use of the Baron. They do still have all three dragons already. I believe there's another one coming up soon. Uh, it is going to be actually just going to be Elder Drake. It's going to be the next one spawning. So that'd be another thing that uh, South Florida now has to worry about is there's three dragons on the side of Truman State. If they go for that objective next time, it's going to be a lot of power in their back pocket. And if they want to keep going for that late game, you, you just you think about the second dragon stack from it if the game goes that long. But here comes an ulti. And press on it to your gone. Finishes him off before Malicious is able to show up as Arcadius has to flash away. There's no more Glacial Prison, so he can't keep the chase on to Arcadius. Meanwhile, Truman State bot side gets themselves a tower and more gold into their pockets. Yeah, that ulti from the Malzahar top lane on LeBlanc was just, it goes to show uh, LeBlanc able to get the kills, but she has no magic resist at all. And all it takes is basically one click from this Malzahar to catch her out. It was fairly close, but that's something that uh, Yurgan's going to have to be worried about now. If he's going to actually go any defenses, he's lost that stack on his Dark Steel now. We'll see what he decides to go for next. I probably just got to sell that so they can keep up. Rosen zoning away South Florida. Truman State still looking to push up, trying to see if they can open up this inhibitor tower. And it gets in really low as the calling comes out from Logan, but they're not able to keep him off of that tower. Yeah, it's a 1-4 split push that we're seeing here as Malzahar's pushing top. They're just trying to deter them back and get as much Ooh. done as they can with this Baron. Great double knockup came in from the Alistar, but Yorgon shows up to delete Arcadius, returning the favor from before. Call of the Forge God gets a triple man knockup as they go for a little... And they go for the all-in. You're gone. Taking low. He has to run away from this fight. Can't join in. Neither can drop shot. As Rosen went in way too aggressively and gives up a shutdown goal to Logan. The wild growth as well. Maybe he's going to continue this fight. No calling left for him. So he can't finish off these low health bars just yet. Has to be careful. He can be taken down by Mucky as they turn around this attention. But they finish off high. And with stacks coming in. Glacial Prison just came up. But it's not enough from the Quicksilver Sash to save his life. 
Double kills already picked up by Logan and Dakeep King seems like he's running, running so far away, but he cannot escape that chase coming in. The triple kill for Logan. The South Florida get the ace and might be able to turn their attention onto these objectives. Yeah, and that was just finally we get to see the the silent man of this match, it felt like, until that point. I mean, he was doing a lot of damage earlier, but Logan going off in that fight, obviously you're gone with that first huge pick onto Arcadius, who was kind of not paying attention, it seemed like, or at least not paying attention to death timers, as you're gone came and blew him up instantly, and then they were able to return the kill or force your gone back uh, to keep them out of the fight, but Logan was just in, in, untouched for most of that fight. And at the end there, when it came a chase down, uh, you're, you're going to have a really hard time getting away from a Lucian when they have a Lulu behind them to speed buff them the entire time. So he was able to clean up the triple kill there. He also had a good flash to dodge Highsmith's uh, um, headbutt pulverize as well, which might have saved a couple of his teammates' lives, but it ended up costing them all. So uh, good plays from the side of South Florida. And they're right back in this. They're still down 3k. They did end up getting one more turret going their way, but they do show life. They lost that mid inhibitor as well, but they still have the ability here. They really need to fight over this Elder Drake who's just spawning right now. And your guns can continuing to delete people, take out Arcadius, take out Monkey, just one of them. Gonna make it so much easier for Logan to go so aggressive, get these triple kills, give you the carry for the team. He's got himself that Guardian's Angel as well, so he's gonna be more facilitated to be aggressive right into the front line. Yeah, the, the the bigger these tanks get, the bigger the ADCs get as well, though, and the, the back lines are. As, so as we saw, Logan starting to do a lot more damage now. He does have a Guardian Angel up, so he won't. He probably will not be the focus target uh, for these fights as well. As you're gone, still no defense, though. A little worrisome. He might be going for... He's got that needlessly large rod. I feel like he might be going for the death cap. More than likely want to get that extra little bit of damage so that he can burst through Mucky or Arcadius, maybe even Rosen, who's going to be pretty squishy. Does have that Maw of Malmordius to do a little bit to counteract your Gon's ability to delete him, but not necessarily going to help him if you get a full death cap on top of the Void Staff Luden's Echo Gunblade that your Gon's already got completed. Yeah, not, not a whole lot of defense for the full offense of this LeBlanc, but it looks like they're going to try and look for a pick here. Maybe not quite. Uh, it looks like all their ultis are ready to go. They were hoping for something there. But uh, this lane. Elder Drake is going to be the big thing. Top lane to keep teams escorting those minions. They have the pressure of the waves on the side going in favor of Truman State. Forced drop shot to show his face there, especially with all this vision that has been placed down by Truman all throughout the map. Make it very difficult for the assassination tools such as that LeBlanc to be able to get into this backline, get a good flank, and finish off someone that is crucial for Truman State. Yeah, and that's exactly what they need to do is not get picked off here for the side of Truman State. They need to have vision, they need to play a, a tight group together, and they need to try and fight as five. Because they, they, every time they fight as five, it seems like they win as long as they're paying attention. Uh, if they get caught off guard, though, is that's the, that's when these fights are going in the uh, in the favor of South Florida. And uh, well, there's, it kind of comes down to to see who wants to take fights where as the Elder Dragon is started up from the side of Truman State. Let's just jump over with the flask gun. Not sure if he wanted to go for that. Arcadius trying to see if he can zone him away. Does have another grab. He makes sure that the Malicious can't go in. He uses it to keep that jungler secure as the team finishes off the elder. He gave up his own life. But that's a glacial bridge with the double knock for that finish off more. But the other one is going to delay the inevitable for now. Flashing four gets knocked up by the arcane assault and kills himself along with the other jungler. But can Truman State continue this pressure? It is an even matchup right now. A lot of damage on a drop shot. He's not gone just yet. The shield's keeping him alive. You're gone. Bounces around. Knocked back forward as they go for that damage the shutdown is picked up by mucky now it's logan 80 carry versus 80 carry heal for heal nobody going down just yet it's still gonna be three four three right now but the elder drake over towards truman they feel invigorated they feel like they can fight but they gotta back off because they already got the minions pushing up in mid high smith goes a little bit far forward does delay the back of logan it doesn't do too much more yeah, and that uh, Elder Dragon uh, ended up, I think, saving Truman a little bit there as a couple kills were picked up by Mucky in the end. Uh, the burn damage almost took out Drop Shot as the Keep King has, seems to be disconnected, and we're going to pause probably waiting for him to come back. But kind of an odd fight. Arcadia is doing everything he could to keep out Malicious there so that they could secure the Elder Dragon. But as you saw, he got deleted before his ult was even done by your gone. Uh, it, again, these, these, these glass cannon builds coming out from both these mid laners 
uh, they both can kill each other extremely quickly but if you get caught out by the other one you're just gone it's it's kind of it, it, it's all about positioning it feels like yeah but one thing is arcadius did his job he made sure malicious couldn't get in there for the smite steal so his team gets the th the triple elder buff so they're very empowered going for this next fight. They feel like they can easily start marching into the base of South Florida. Yeah, they're taking the objective controls away from them. Obviously, the, the they had wave control already. They had that they had the mid inhibitor down, and then they were able to get vision and then control the fight around Elder Dragon and pick up the objective. Like I said, it's just unfortunate that Malzahar died in it, as they do end up just they do end up trading and going two for two. Both mid laners and jugglers were were both dead in that fight. But again. You mentioned they still have this Elder Dragon buff. It's not... I'm not entirely sure how much more time we have on it, but we'll see when we get back. But uh, they should be able to do something with it. It might not be the easiest thing to try and push one of these Tier 3s that are still up, but they should be able to at least uh, get Vision around Baron and maybe maybe bait Florida State... Or, not Florida State. University of Southern Florida into another fight. Yeah, so that's going to be the big thing for Truman State right now, is whether or not they can get South Florida out of their base, because... This is where the siege comes in for South Florida. They want to make sure that they keep up their inhibitors. There was a lot of damage that went down to their Nexus Tower while they fought around the Elder. Even though they didn't get the buff, they were able to delay a little bit. So getting the pick onto Arcadius, getting the pick on to Rosen as well. So not going to have too much of a threat from that assassination tool of Kane. Yeah, he, he, he can't really... Uh, you can't assassinate the Lucian anymore right now either though, because of the uh, Garden Angel. We'll be able to ki keep him back up as well. So we'll be able to see how people want to... Uh, what's going to happen with these both these teams. Both teams ending up uh, close to their last items in a lot of situations here. Keeping themselves nice and healthy. Six item builds, the gold lead doesn't matter as much. But again, you have to, you have to give it to the side of Truman State right now who is doing fairly well in uh, controlling uh, the map and the objectives of this game. Now we get the pause. It's finally ended. We've got to keep King back into the game. So it'll be a nice even 5v5. Oof, we got to see how low that Nexus Tower actually got. Pyramid State, they feel like they need this Baron in order to push in as the rest of South Florida had already backed. So great call coming in yeah. from Truman. They had the vision knowing that they were all defending and they have that Elder Dragon still. They used it to secure the Baron and this should be their, their ability to break base. They'll probably either go top or mid here with their Shen going bottom and they'll just be able to push it in unless they do it a different way. It looks like Alistar's already heading bottom, but they, they this should be a good push for the side of Truman State. This should be a game-ending push if you think about it at this point, almost 40 minutes in uh, with how shambles of the base of Southern Florida is. They're going to have to pull off something good here. They're going to have to look for one of those picks that they've been getting all game to keep themselves alive in this one. Steph, gotta keep in mind, this is 40 minutes into the game. Orin is on the side of South Florida, so you look over to those items, you're getting these upgrades that he provides for the team, so even more stats padding the deck for South Florida. So if it's a straight up even 5v5, could still go for South Florida. Yeah, and hopefully they did. The, the, the Elder Dragon buff is still active on three members of Truman State, but they're gonna go in for the fight right now, and oh my goodness, he's almost dead. Off here comes the feather storm. The staying united to keep him alive, but it's not enough as Logan finally gets the unstoppable. The backline fighting, getting rid of the Guardians Angel for Rosen. He doesn't have much that he can do as the double kill finally comes effect for Logan. The flash forward for Malicious to get that glacial prison, but didn't connect it onto anybody. Truman State's gotta run for the hills. Logan feels aggressive. He wants to keep going forward. As Highsmith tried to do his best to save his team, but it was all for naught as your gone deletes him. Well, only Arcadius and the Keep King survive. Teleport coming in from your gun. They feel like they can go for the end. Yeah, they, they teleport to get that uh, that uh, outer tier two right there, and they're also going to do a split push now, where they're going to try and get mid and bottom at the same time. It looks like that was a. Uh, it felt like Truman State jumped the gun on that fight super hard. They went in for these kills, and your gun just picked out Mucky like he was nothing. And they didn't even have to use their ultis. And again, you're gone. Picking people out like it's nothing. He kills Arcadius. And now they're going to get both inhibitors here relatively easily. And there's massive two huge... Minions yeah, too. massive minion waves. This might be game. All they needed to do was get that good fight. And it seems like they did it. They got the pick they needed. And Southern Florida is looking to end the game right here. Even though Shen's still keeping with the Baron still. 
Bruce is about to come back up. They got the knock up on the monkey. Can monkey turn it around? Featherstorm trying to see if he can get the root, but Yurikon does a lot of damage. He had to get back. He had to distortion out of there, but he's finished off as Bacales goes down, and they finish off Malicious as well, who went really far forward. Actually, he somehow survives. They don't continue the chase. They didn't want to finish him off. They felt the threat of Yurikon going for the assassination was too high, so they backed off. And even though it looked like it could have been ended by South Florida, game continues to trek on yeah the game continues to trek on and now both sides are basically dead even at this point that fight just put the game in a point where uh both teams almost have two inhibitors exposed too essentially but uh south florida is not done yet here they found the, like i said they, they need to find a pick they find a pick and you mentioned it as well they're so late into this game the, these these Orin buff items are coming to play. Three of them already on the side. Looks like the Infinity Edge and the uh, Death Cap were the choices of the de of the damage, and that just little extra stats letting them do more damage. And also, Logan has not died, I don't believe, since he got this GA, and he's starting to be that huge second damage threat that the side of South Florida has needed this entire game. It's not just you're gone anymore. They have tons of CC, they have tons of damage, and they also have Lulu to save people, which is what Mikhail's has been doing uh, a lot of this time, using that uh, oh, uh, the Lulu ulti to keep people alive, or even in that last fight, try and keep themselves alive. Plus he's got the Arden sensor, just completed the GLP as well. Would have honestly expected him to go for his namesake in that Mikhail's, but he wants damage. He wants to be able to continue to poke out Mucky so that it's easier for Yorgon to delete him. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing there to try and keep people CC'd out so they can they can get caught out and they can get killed. Uh, he's doing a lot of peeling, so that might be the other reason why he picked that item up. Try and keep Grossed off of Logan. Excuse me. Right on right, this game's getting... <laughs> Really intense as Rosen looks like he wants to go for this assassination onto Mikhail's, but you don't want to assassinate the support that the Wild Growth used on himself and Nethergrass into the backline onto the Malicious. But can it be enough? They got the knockup onto Rosen. He's taken very low. Has to shadow walk to give himself a little bit more help. Here Staying comes on gone. Here's your gun. He wants to delete Rosen. Great triple man knockup coming in from drop shot, but he's not going to be able to survive. But his team fighting in the back line with the support. The Keep King going far onto your gun, but not able to finish him off just yet. He takes a lot of damage. One more distortion orb. Not able to finish off just yet. Getting a little bit more damage. Trying to run away. Mucky slowed down just a touch, but it's not enough. Even Logan, he finally lost his Guardian's Angel, but you can tell that South Florida, they're not done with the hunt. They want to continue and look for the end. Yeah, there's this th kind of three-on-two situation. Oh, they find Mucky again, gets caught out. That's really bad. That might be the game. Oh, not him. That definitely is the game. Flash forward with that uh, vision. They wanted to go for the damage. They finished off Logan. He didn't have the Guardian's Angel anymore. And Malicious taking a little bit of chunk of damage from those minions. Arcadius has to back. He knows he can be deleted by Yurgon. No longer having the Nether Grass. With these towers being besieged by these Baron, the, not Baron, the super minions. They have to be careful. They have to continue to keep the space alive. And then that, you see the power of Malzahar late game, though. Look at those minions die so fast with that Malefic Vision just popping back and forth there. Good wave clear. Really helpful for them right now. But yeah, they. Uh, Mucky got cut out there really awkwardly, and then they went all in on Logan, and uh, unfortunately, you're gone. Missed uh, the binding onto Arcadius. I think that binding would have killed him, and it would have been a fair trade, and that might have been able to still end the game for the side of South Florida, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And we're 35 seconds away from another Elder Drake, and another minute away from a third Baron. So we're going to see how this goes. There's going to be some a lot of objectives on the table here soon, and uh, South Florida doesn't want to give up any of them, I don't think, especially that Elder Drake, because that'd be a second Elder Drake. The second Elder Drake, even more buffed now after those patches. Uh, I don't even want to know what's going to happen, but oh my Ryan goodness. Smith taking a lot of damage, doesn't even have time to go unchained. It's deleted by Yurgon and the rest of the squad. And without that engaged support, South Florida, they got to feel confident. They can take down that Elder Drake. They could probably even go for a little bit more if they get that Baron. Yeah, they, they definitely have the secure on the Elder Drake now, you would assume. Uh, they have the vision control, they have the number advantage, and they should be able to burst this out pretty quickly. Wisdom was playing a little bit with fire as he had to clear away some of the vision. With the Elder Drake being secured by South Florida. The fight was even before. He's got to be in the hands of Florida. Rosen has to dodge away, doesn't want to get hit up by the call of the Forge God. Let's get a little bit of damage onto Malicious, even using the Nether Crest to try to see if they can delete that jungler who is way too far away from his team. This could actually put everything right back for Truman with that pick. 
Yeah, it, it, silly mistake there from Malicious. There's no reason for him to be that far forward by himself. And a good call from Truman State, though, realizing that he was that far forward alone. And Arcadia's just using the ultimate, because why not? It's four on one. They kill him before any help comes. It's totally worth. Now it's even terms. And it probably stops South Florida from being able to take Baron for free. Well, you're gone. He wants to see if he can open up the base again as the inhibitors have respawned for Truman. The only one defending is going to be Highsmith. So not necessarily the most impactful person in it to a leblanc he can do his best to try to get rid of the shields but he's going to be poked out so heavily look at the amount of damage it takes yeah. as the team gets the baron flash coming in from highsmith most likely going to be this inhibitor falling even the mid one getting taken down by logan yeah it looked like because malicious was dead they they had no way of countering the uh baron so they just give it up but they use it to try and get their own damage on there's another ulti comes flash out on to drop shot trying to get the damage here comes the umbral chest pass onto the orn he's got to be careful he has a lot of damage on his head you're gone using the chains to slow down high smith no flash for this alistar so he can't go into range he even missed that knock up so not gonna go for anything more a little bit of chip damage malicious coming down the lane he used that unchained to keep himself alive Keep your eye on this top wave. A lot of minions have piled up trying to see if they can take down that inhibitor for the side of Truman. Yeah, it was malicious had to respond and was running down lane. It looked like he was might have actually got there in time, but smart decision making from the side of Truman State, backing off, letting that top wave do some damage. Excuse me. Oh my goodness, I'm dying of uh, yawning here apparently. <laughs> Back and forth for both squads. Neither one really sure how to end it. Playing a little bit too greedy here and there. Someone getting picked off. Someone getting a little bit too far out. And making it so that either Trinlin or South Florida can take this game home. Now full builds are coming into effect. We've gotten to the point of the game where it doesn't matter how much you're up in gold. Everyone's already got their full items. They don't really need any more. Yeah, and now we start seeing the final, as you said, the final items going out. There's two Banshees now, and there goes the first one procking off, and uh, the fight's happening now. True Brosen going in, ulti coming out yep. from the Shen, but... They're trying to go for it, as the Keep King is far forward, but only got to get that stone plating out of Malicious. So nobody falling just yet, a couple summoners here and there, but still could be the siege coming in from South Florida. And that's exactly what they want to do here is keep pushing. Obviously, they're clearing out those Baron buff minions from the side of Truman pretty easily. But uh, the Baron kind of buying them time right now. But unfortunately, mid and bot are getting pushed very, very heavily. And they're going to have to deal with these relatively soon. Otherwise, their last Nexus turret is going to be in jeopardy here. It's Mucky who's going to clear those. You're gone has made it a point to punish Mucky anytime he's alone. So I don't know if that's the best call and try to keep Mucky with the rest of his team so there could be some sort of appeal for the LeBlanc. Yeah, and here comes that other problem though. They cleared out one wave and now Malzahar has to clear out the bottom wave. This means that there's one less person there, but Truman, uh, not Truman, Brosin from Truman wants to go in and try and start a fight still. He's looking for those kills, but LeBlanc, you're gone pushing in mid wave now. It looks like they're eventually gonna be able to pick out this tower maybe, but it, they, they just don't, it's really hard to push into Baron minions. Very interesting, you look over to Logan, he's sold that Guardian's Angel, he has a stopwatch now. He wants to make sure that he can stay alive as long as possible in these fights. Yeah, looking to make those flashy plays, making sure he's not going to get picked off by this Malzahar or anyone else. Here comes the Ooh, Faldi. Good pick onto Arcadius, and he's deleted, and that's going to be the knockup onto Rosen as well. Does have the Guardian's Angel, but 4v5 for the favor of South Florida as they continue to siege. Yeah, the siege is non-stop and continuing. There comes yeah. the chains, lands on Brosen, almost dies there, gets out of it though. But this never-ending siege right now. Not at all, but you... It's all hanging on a knife's edge. It just depends on who gets caught out and when. Yeah, it, if Truman Stay can keep staying alive until Arcadius is back, they might have a chance here. And they seem like they're doing pretty well. That turret's not taking too much damage yet, but now those minions are on the Nexus turret. Okay, so and go for the kill, Smith. And Smith goes way too far in, the unchained into the Stay United, but it's not going to help him for too much longer. Exhaust onto Logan, but he punts him around. And once that goes down, no longer having the damage reduction, he falls, and so does his inhibitor tower. The final inhibitor going down for South Florida. Yeah, it looks like that pick onto Arcadius was the final nail in the coffin for Truman State from South Florida being able to take this. They're trying to close it out here, doing as much damage as they can. Barosin in the back line. In the back line, not going to be able to finalize that kill. The swag coming in from the Kales as they finally hit that last kill. The last nail in the coffin onto this cane with the Nexus Towers going down. Finally, after 51 minutes, it's going to be the game picked up if it's not going to be a final amount of kills for South Florida.
Yeah, a couple extra kills picked up there, and has the, the extremely loud victory screen as that was I turned loud it for up. You too? Yeah, that was really loud mine for was too. really loud. I don't know huh. why, but yeah, as That's the weird. extremely loud comes out there at the end, we see uh, the side of South Florida take the victory, and they actually did end up with a 600 gold lead at the end there. They were actually behind for the majority of that game. But uh, stalwart defense and uh, team management there from the side of South Florida, able to come back and take the victory in game number one. Yeah, but definitely shows for everyone why these two teams kind of are in the Teemo Cup. They struggled in the early game to close it out, and honestly, great showing coming in from South Florida to finally get the last kills, the last nails in the coffin to take game one. Yeah, the, the, we saw three Barons, uh, two Elder Drakes, and three other Drakes in that fight. Like, very back and forth. Lots of pick heavy on both sides. Both Brosen on this cane, and you're gone on LeBlanc. Just going to town, diving people in, diving in on these squishy targets, making the plays happen. Uh, but in the end, uh, the side of South Florida had more CC, and they were able to knock off that Banshees and lock down uh, Arcadius there at the end and just secure the victory off of that. Yeah, so with that game one, it is picked up by the University of South Florida, Truman State. they got to figure out what went wrong in that game, see if they can shore up some of those weaknesses. But we're going to find out in game two, so we cut over to a short little break. Yeah, here we go, guys. We'll be right back.